In a world filled with iPhones and galaxies, there exists an alternate universe where the thought of spending $900 on a phone is unheard of. For this reason, a completely separate smartphone market exists where the mission statement isn't let's make the best phone we can possibly make, but rather let's make the cheapest phone we can possibly make and actually still use it. The 2017 G5 Plus is a prime example of this. Hello, my name is Kerry Bauman, and today we have an amazing guest, the Moto G5 Plus. You can find it on websites such as Amazon, ranging in prices from 180 to 250, in gray or gold, 2 gigs of RAM or 4 gigs of RAM, 32 or 64 gigs of storage, and with or without ads. There's no shortage of ways that Moto has been cutting costs, and since this channel has had its share of no's when it comes to asking for demo phones or sponsorships, we're on a budget this week. And just like the G5 Plus, we're going to do the best with what we got. Let's see what it has to offer. Consider the design. A grotesque monstrosity born of relentless Moto inbreeding, riddled with plastic edges, crippled by a giant camera bump. Chronically cheap. An elegant smartphone or humanity's cruelest mistake? At first glance, I thought it was hideous. Maybe it's an acquired taste like black coffee, dark chocolate, or anal. But after using it for some time now, it's still hideous. But it's unique, so I'll give it props for that. Up front is a 5.2 inch IPS LCD display with a 1080p resolution. On paper, it doesn't scream $200 phone, it's actually decent. Indoors, I've yet to complain. Colors and contrast are fine, and it gets really dim in low light, which is easy on the eyes when staring at the phone in a dark room. But in direct sunlight, it's a real stinker. There are two color modes to choose from, standard and vibrant, but the difference between them is minimal. Overall, a positive experience. On the right are the volume rockers and the power button, which has a little added texture to it. On the top is a SIM and micro SD card slot, and on the bottom next to the headphone jack is something called a micro USB port, which after some research, apparently it was the standard charging port back in the 90s. Notice the lack of a shitty downward facing speaker. That's because they moved it to the front, where it's supposed to go. Don't get me wrong, it's fucking trash, but I'd take a shitty front facing speaker over a shitty downward facing speaker any day. Now let's talk about the buttons. The fingerprint sensor is fast and accurate, that's not the problem. The problem is that if you're going to have a fingerprint sensor on the front, you typically have capacitive buttons next to it. Naturally, you want to use that giant fingerprint sensor as your home button, but when using the on-screen buttons, you have to use what's on the screen, and the fingerprint sensor does nothing. Moto's solution to this is to allow you to get rid of the on-screen buttons completely and just use gestures on the fingerprint sensor. Swipe left to go back, press it to go home, or swipe right for your recents menu. Hold it to turn the screen off, or hold it a bit longer to activate Google Assistant. Eventually I picked up on it, but it never felt right. Far too often I found myself swiping left on it, but it just went home instead of going back. A novel idea, but swings and misses in my book. On to the software side. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It's mostly stock with a few subtle animations and shortcuts spread throughout. You can chop to turn on the flashlight, twist to launch the camera, or swipe up from the bottom to launch one-handed mode. For the most part, the speed has been fine. The Snapdragon 625 is great for the price. But with only 2 gigs of RAM, memory management closes out apps noticeably quick. It's even closed out apps like Spotify and Google Maps, which have left me stranded a couple times while navigating. Every once in a while there will be some lag here and there, but for the most part it's pretty good. And in this price range, it's been the fastest phone I've used. Historically, battery life and the 600 series Snapdragon processors have been a dynamic duo. The Batman and Robin type pairing of the 625 and the 3000 mAh battery on this phone are no exception. Using the analytical approach to measure battery life with heavy usage, this thing managed a staggering 7 hours and 4 minutes of screen on time. Putting that comfortably in second place of any phone I've tested. The 12 megapixel plateau on the back of the phone is holding its own for $200. With good lighting, pictures come out looking pretty good. It's not flagship level as colors can seem washed out at times. 
There's no optical image stabilization, and low-light pictures are eh. Some turn out alright, and others not so much. There's some noticeable noise, but nothing too crazy. At a bang for buck grading criteria, I'll give it a pass. It's capable of recording 4K video at 30 frames per second, and even 1080p60, which is insane at this price point. So when it comes down to it for the price, usability is off the charts. The battery's not going to let you down, and the camera's above average. And if you're confident enough to be seen in public with the equivalent of Amy Schumer in your pocket, more power to you. This phone has exceeded my expectations in more ways than I can count. But if build quality is at all important to you, this would be the one phone I'd throw a case on. Because, let's face it, if you bring home something this ugly, you better use protection. And other than that, I think I've done enough body shaming today to piss off an entire gender. Am I being too shallow? Am I expecting unrealistic body standards? Are you able to see past what's on the outside and love it for what's on the inside? Let me know in the comments below. And then when you're done, hit that subscribe button to tune in for future roasts. Until then, party on to the next one. Again, thank you guys so much for stopping by, and hopefully we'll see you in another. Cheers. But other than that, I think I've done enough body shaming to piss off an entire day. We'll see you in another. Cheers. We weren't even recording. Oh. This phone isn't... Using the analytical... <clears throat> but with only two gigs of RAM, min fuck, seven hours, book, can't get that right. Stick.